Hey guys, so it's been a little while since the last video and I'd like to apologise for that. It's not because I've forgotten you guys, in fact it's actually because I've been so busy working on the Bionaire in this channel that I haven't had a chance to upload a video. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming to the Bionaire, both the YouTube channel and the blog. I'm excited to show you guys it, so please just bear with me for a little while whilst there's not quite as much going on on the channel. It's going to be worth it, hopefully. So it's going to be a quick one, but hopefully I'll upload something a bit meatier next week. Today I just want to speak to you quickly so that we've got something in the bag and I'm going to talk about embodied cognition because I find that a fascinating subject and it's something that's uh, quite misunderstood among a lot of people on YouTube. So embodied cognition, what is it? Well I'll tell you what it's not. It's not thinking with your body as cool as that may be. It's not that your brain is distributed all throughout your body you know, like um, Tony Stark and that really rubbish Ultimates comic, which you've probably never read and that's a random reference and I shouldn't have even brought it up. Uh, what it is about is it's about the way that you do think, not with your body so much as thanks to your body, and in a way with your body, but not using your body. So that's it, yeah. So now you understand what embodied cognition is, don't it? Um, when you think normally, you probably experience yourself thinking with words, an inner monologue. Um, or at least that's what it feels like. There are actually many different ways to think. You can think visually, you can think with unsymbolized thought, but that's a whole other topic. Normally you think of thought as being like an inner monologue, like the little thought boxes that you get in comics. This, of course, is English, and your brain doesn't naturally understand English, if you see what I mean. So the question is, how are you translating English thought from from your own thoughts and also from what people are saying to you, how do you translate that into something your brain understands? How is it being interpreted into pure reason? What is the kind of base level machine code of the brain? When you program on a computer, you program in a programming language like C++, C Sharp, Java, and then that gets converted into machine code, which isn't really legible for most humans, and then that gets converted into binary code, which is zeros and ones, and that represents um, on and off switches, so a 1 is on and a 0 is off. But the point is that the computer doesn't understand C++ or C Sharp, which is statements like if, then, and else. That sounds like English. Likewise, the assumption is that the brain doesn't understand English. The brain has some kind of machine code. Somehow the brain has pure reason and pure understanding, and this is what our thought is based on. This is what the words we hear and we think are translated into in order for us to understand them and take action on them. So what is this machine code? That's what psychologists asked. And they used to call it mentalese. Mentalese wasn't an actual theory, it was just a word given to something that they didn't really understand. So mentalese, the idea was you hear words, you think words, you translate them into mentalese, and that's pure reason. But now we're starting to think that mentalese is actually not a very useful um, idea. Instead, the brain doesn't work on a language at all. There's no base code for the brain, instead the brain actually uses your body to understand. So everything that you think and everything you learn is related back to your physical experience. This is just a theory, but it's one that I think makes a lot of sense. So say I'm talking to you and I say I was walking through the woods and then all of a sudden a massive bear came and also it was cold. What's going on in your brain is that you're interpreting what I'm saying as I say it to you and the way you're doing that is by sort of experiencing it, you're visualising it, you visualise yourself walking through the woods or me walking through the woods, you maybe remember what it's like to feel cold, you remember what it's like to feel scared, and if we look at what happens in the brain during these times, actually the brain areas light up as though you are experiencing the things I'm talking about, so your brain simulates what's happening. Likewise, if you plan something, if you think, oh I'm going to go and uh, open the door later, <laughs> it's a great plan, it's a sort of exciting evening that I have, well then what actually happens is you you visualise, but you also feel yourself going up to the door handle and twisting it in your hand. And you might actually sort of even get a sensation of what that twisting feels like. So your brain, again, is replaying it, using your body to kind of visualise what's happening. And so in doing that, you understand it. And then you've got layers of abstraction. So when you do maths or when you talk in metaphor, you have to convert it back and back. But ultimately, it's still based on physical experience. So in short, we rely on our physical experiences in order to understand everything. And without having evolved and grown up in a physical environment, we might not have the tools that we need to be able to engage in thought. And this has all sorts of implications. It has implications for artificial intelligence, for instance, because they might be barking up the wrong tree trying to make an AI that is entirely software-based. It might be that it needs to have a physical presence, a body of some kind, 
in order to have any kind of understanding, in order to really truly understand words and give them meaning and apply them in a useful context and then to be able to engage in abstract thought by building on that. It also means, in theory, that using our bodies and increasing our awareness could well improve our ability to think. And it also has in interesting implications for CBT, Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, which, as you know if you've read my blog and watched my other videos, I think you can use to enhance performance by convincing yourself to have certain physiological responses at the times that they're most appropriate. So the reason I think that CBT and thoughts can be used to trigger certain emotional responses or to make yourself more focused or more alert or to improve your memory is because essentially you're not just thinking it, you're experiencing it. And when you visualise something happening, your body responds almost as though it is happening. So if you think you're going to fail, you word it in your head but you also almost experience failing. You thus produce these hormones and these neurotransmitters and you're pretty much bound to fail. Anyways, it's an interesting subject I think and the main reason I want to bring it up is just because you hear a lot of people saying like you need to balance and use your proprioception because of embodied cognition but actually no, they have nothing to do with each other. It's just a, a very interesting subject and one that I thought you guys might find interesting because I don't think there's any videos that I found on YouTube about it. If you'd like to learn more about it then please check out my video on YouTube and of course as usual in the coming weeks I'm going to be talking about bodybuilding and working online and apps and brain training and nootropics and all these things again as usual. I'm going to be hopefully uh, in, uh, increasing my output and yes there are big things on the way like I teased earlier on so if you'd like to learn more about that and sign up to the mailing list and I hope you'll stay with me, stay tuned, subscribe, like, share and all those things. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now.